Hello everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be taking you guys along while I binge some books for a week. This is what I like to do when I don't really have a set theme for a reading vlog, but I do want to film all of my reactions and thoughts and reviews for the books that I'm currently going through. Plus, it is the first gloomy week and it is giving all the cozy vibes. It has been raining nonstop for the past two days and so it's the perfect weather to just get under the coziest blanket and binge some good books. So I want to get through like three or four books hopefully within this video. I did already start one of the books and that is The Ministry of Time by Kellyanne Bradley, I believe. And I'm on page 85. I'm not very far into it and I started this probably a few days ago, but it's just been taking me so long to get through it because the pacing of the book is so odd compared to what I'm used to reading. And her writing is honestly, for me, kind of hard to follow along with. I won't give you guys like the full synopsis because I do want this to be spoiler free. And I went into this book blind and I think that always makes it more fun, especially when it has such a unique premise like this one has. But basically it is about this woman who works in the time travel department of the government. And she is assigned someone who they brought from the past into present day and they brought like a whole group of people from different periods of the past into present day and are trying to get them to live in our modern world. And our female main character is what you would call a bridge. So she's supposed to help the man who is from the past bridge seamlessly into today's society. And we're just really following them too. I am liking it. I'm not loving it yet. I'm only, I'm not even at 100 pages. So I do feel like it's very much first impressions what I'm having, but right off the bat, her writing is beautiful. I have underlined so many different lines. And at the same time, it's kind of hard for me to follow along with. It's not the type of book you can just read when you're like tired or you just want something to read passively in my opinion because there's so much history mixed into it. Her writing, it's a lot of nuance. Like she isn't outright saying a lot of things or describing a lot of things. Like she'll say it in a metaphor or she'll, she'll allude to things, but she's not outright like describing certain things. So because of that, it's kind of hard for me to follow along with and I find myself a lot kind of getting distracted or getting bored and having to like go back and reread what I skimmed over. Like I can't skim in this book cause it's just, it's very complex. Like I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it. I haven't heard anyone talk about it in this way necessarily, but I'm really excited to see where it ends up going. And I feel like if I end up getting really attached to these characters then I could end up really loving the book, but it's not a passive read. So I think that's where I'm struggling because I don't know if I picked it up at the right time, but I still want to get through it because I already started it. I'm going to sit down, cozy up and read because it's just so, so gloomy outside. And I will give you guys my thoughts when I get a little bit farther in. Let's do a little wrap up of The Ministry of Time. We're not gonna talk about how long this book took me to finish. And honestly, I feel like that kind of is the vibe for my thoughts on this book. That's so obnoxious. Every time I put my phone down on something, it like peels off with the most obnoxious sound ever. I literally barely even remember what happened on how it ended and I finished it like a day ago. That just kind of goes to show like how invested I was with the book. I wanted to like it so much more than I did. 
because I heard two people that I love watching rave about it. It's, I think, considered a sci-fi book. So this was my first dip into sci-fi. I overall enjoyed it because I enjoy reading intricate, out of this world stories that are completely impossible. I love reading about complicated characters and I think that's why I like the book. I'm not sure I really enjoyed much of it, to be honest. I wanted to like it so much more than I did and I feel like by the end of it, I was honestly so confused. I kept looking at Renee when I was reading and being like, can you please read this book and explain to me what's going on? Because I feel like whenever we're watching a movie and I'm super confused, he's always like, this is actually what's happening. Like you're missing the whole point. And that's how I felt with this entire book. Like I felt like I was just missing the point. We're getting so much explanation of like the current conflict. And I still didn't really know what was going on or like where they were going with this. Like I just feel like the plot wasn't super well crafted to where I was very invested, to where I, I don't, I don't know, to where I really cared about what was going to happen with this whole time travel thing or what was at stake. And there were some reveals towards the end that I feel like weren't that well integrated into the story and would have made it hit so much harder if it had been. And I just kind of couldn't care less like when the reveals were happening towards the end. It was, I would say a shock factor out of 10. It was like a solid five for me. Like I was like, whoa, but not like jaw on the floor. I cannot believe that just happened. Like I need to talk to someone about this. When you pick up a book, matters. Well, I think I thought I was in the mood for this and then as I was reading it I was like I don't want to read this but if I put it down I'm not going to finish it so I just kept trying to power through it and it was taking me so so long to get through it and I didn't want to audiobook it but the pros in this are so good. Her metaphors are just so thought out to a T. I liked hearing about the two main characters and where their story went and where their very like backseat romance went and i say backseat because it's not like the whole point of the book it takes very much backseat in the plot i just i really liked hearing about it i think it was super interesting just the premise of like someone from the people from the past mixing with people from the present and trying to bridge into our modern society it reminds me of that joke you guys know that that like meme on the internet that's like what would send a victorian child into a coma is that what it is? That's kind of like so much of this book and the characters in this book. Like it's people from like the 1800s, 1600s. Just like literally trying to get on with modern technology and modern day. And you're reading about a lot of that. I just felt as if a lot of the characters were kind of described in passing throughout the book. Like the people from the past that I wish we had gotten more of them because I feel like I would have cared more. Or maybe she did put a lot and I just didn't, I just couldn't get into it. I don't know. I would give this, I think a three stars. And I think a lot of that is personal bias. Like I just didn't connect to the story, but the writing in it was phenomenal. I am recommending this to my boyfriend because he loves sci-fi books. He's obsessed with the Red Rising series and he loves history. And so much of this is also history because we read about the backgrounds of the people from the past and that is integrated into actual historical events. I think someone like him would love this book and I'm like, you need to read it and I want to discuss it with you so you can explain to me all the things that I missed. I feel like I missed picking up on certain things like that and it's probably just the type of reader I am. So that is my review of The Ministry of Time. I am ready to get on with this video and to get on with some other books because I've been dying to pick up some other things i was i was watching some people's tbr videos because i was like what are the girlies reading right now i feel like it's a very big fantasy season and there's some fantasy books on my radar there's two books that i'm thinking about let me give you my thoughts i either want to read once upon a broken heart by stephanie garber because i read the carol trilogy in preparation and literally with the purpose to read this trilogy and I wanted to save it like for fall time. I'm also thinking of The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna because I love her writing and I know that book is gonna make me feel things. And I really wanna read that one. Okay, I'm gonna decide and then pick one.
I've got book mail. So my friend and I decided that we would start, I would say buddy reading. We're gonna start buddy reading. So I let her pick the book that we're reading this time. And it just got here because I primed it today. And it is called Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera. I have never heard of this. Oh wow, there's some really crazy quotes from authors on the back. There's one from Stephen King, Alice Feeney, Alex, how do you say his name? Michaelides? Oh my gosh, it takes place in a small Texas town. Wait, that's so perfect. I think this is a mystery about two best friends and one of them gets murdered. And I think the other girl is the suspect. I thought it would be a good pick for spooky season, so. This is Shay's choice for October and I'm excited and maybe we'll read it after Once Upon a Broken Heart. Also, mini update, I'm absolutely loving and fully obsessed with Once Upon a Broken Heart. And I see now where the romance is going. I didn't know who it was between at the beginning of the book, but now I fully understand where it's going and I'm really, really excited. And now every time I get a scene of them, I'm like smiling because I am just like, I just love them. And I just, I love, I don't know if it's a spoiler for me to say who it's between, so I'm not gonna like specify. And the writing is just so, so, so easy to get through and to binge. Like I can sit here for 30 minutes and go through like 10% of the book, maybe like 45 to an hour, but it doesn't feel that long. The chapters are also so short, which makes the flow of it so easy to get through. And right now we're at a point where there's like a mystery happening and our two main characters are on the quest to find out who did it, who's behind it, and who's like out for Evangeline's demise basically. And I don't wanna say more than that, but I'm really, really, really enjoying it. And it's like just what I needed to get me out of the slump that I feel like Ministry of Time put me in. Um, I don't think it was the book's fault. I think it was like timing and everything combined and genre and just all of that, so. That's pretty much it, but I'm gonna read for the rest of the night and try and finish it. All done. I've just finished Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber and I feel like I can honestly just rate it off the bat because I usually think about the rating while I'm reading it because I'm like, what is this feeling like? And it's around a four to 4.5. I don't know what like I'll end up finally rating it as, but it's definitely in like the higher ratings for me. I enjoyed this book so, so much from the writing to the characters, to the plot. I felt like everything was so on point and pieced together in such a great way to make it a really, really enjoyable fantasy book. I think the plot itself and just the world that we're living in is not doing too much. What ended up happening for me in the last Caraval book was I felt like she threw in 70 different plots and it just became like a jumbled mess of crazy plot twists that actually made no sense. And I feel like this is just constructed so well. It's actually so simple, which I love. Like if you're looking for a good, simple fantasy read that isn't doing over the top things, which makes it hard to read or like hard to understand, this is such a good book. I feel like this is a fantasy book that does not take a lot of brain power. There is not a lot of world building. It's actually so simple. You know, you're just kind of dealing with the North and the South and that's pretty much it. And the North and the South do things different ways. And we see our character Evangeline travel to the North for the first time and encounter all these different things during her time there. And that is pretty much it. We also deal with fates, which are like these immortal beings that they basically have like magical powers and will sometimes make bargains with humans that usually end up kind of screwing over the humans and we see Evangeline get wrapped up with Jax who we met in the Caraval series and she goes on like this quest with him throughout the book which I thought is so enjoyable when two characters are going on a quest together it's like my favorite thing ever in fantasy and it wasn't too complicated like it was doing just enough for me to be really intrigued and there was high enough stakes that I was really interested but it wasn't so so much like where the world itself was even just hard for me to grasp which made the plot like hard for me to grasp 
which can happen in fantasy books even the really really good ones sometimes they have the most intricate worlds but that in itself is just you know it's not like a passive nighttime read for me like i have to really be in the mood for that but i feel like this is just such a good like fantasy palette cleanser almost like it's just such an easy read i love the unique features of our female main character evangeline and then of course our male main character is pretty much Jax, which is one of the fates he is the prince of hearts and i just love his character like i just love his character he's like the perfect male main character that that you should hate but you actually love and he is brooding and powerful and immortal and has all these different like dimensions to him and you don't know what's real and what's not because he is a fate so you can't tell if his feelings are like actually honest but i feel like the characters were done really really well and all the supporting characters were so likable i was so into them I loved the friends that they meet. I love the places that they go and the things that they encounter. Like it was just put together so, so well in my opinion. I wouldn't say there was like major plot twists, but the ones that were put in, I didn't see them coming. Like with whatever scene was coming next and with whatever reveal she was writing in next, I did not see it coming, which I really enjoyed because I felt like with her last books, I predicted everything and it was like such convenient plot twists and reveals and in this one I actually feel like I was really surprised. I didn't predict any of them and I feel like it made so much sense with the story and it made the story better. We got such small tiny teases of romance in this book. A lot of it is just like plot and characters but not romance I would say. I feel like it's just a lot of tension building and getting to know the characters, like truly getting to know them, which I love. I feel like it makes for a way better romance when it's done that way, if it's done well. Now it's to pick the next read. I'm gonna go look at my shelf and see what's sitting there for me to pick up. And then I will report back as to what I picked. Time to start reading our next book. I just pulled up to Barnes and I'm just gonna go into the cafe and read there for a while because I've been inside all day. So I thought it would be nice to go change scenery and it gives me an excuse to browse the shelves in there. But for the next book, we have Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera. Oh wait, I unboxed this with you guys, I forgot. Okay, well this is the next read because Shay texted me that she's literally on chapter 21 and she was like, do I need to slow down for you? And I was like, no, I can catch up. So I'm gonna go in there and try and binge this. It's a mystery, so it's perfect for spooky season. I've heard the plot of it is kind of like only murders in the building. If you've seen that show, it like has to do with a murder in a podcast. Oh, I'm excited. The only other podcast murder book I've read is None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell, which Shay told me it kind of reminds her of. So I'm excited to get into this. I will see how far I get and give you my thoughts. Yesterday afternoon, I was able to get a good chunk into the book. I'm on page 110, chapter 18. Now, unfortunately, you know I was buddy reading this with Shay, and then she texted me this morning, I finished the book. She completely left me behind, and I was trying so hard to catch up to her yesterday. I thought I was making really good progress, and she said that she just couldn't put it down and that she needed to finish it, which to me is a good sign of a thriller mystery because that's what you want from this type of book. And I just wanna give you guys like first impressions, what I'm thinking so far, because I am now feeling competitive and I want to binge the rest of this book today so that way I can talk about it with Shay. I wanna tell you what it's about because I feel like I didn't give you a good summary in the first clip. So we're following our main character. Her name is Lucy. Years prior, her and her best friend were out together and her best friend was murdered. She was the only like key witness and suspect on the scene, but unfortunately she remembers none of the night and so many people because of that think she killed her best friend which reminds me of a book I read recently where a girl could not remember 
the night of the murder and the case has pretty much just been closed or gone cold for a few years and Lucy has been able to move on with her life since her best friend died. However, a true crime podcast picks up the case and decides to make a whole season on it and fleshes the whole thing out. So Lucy is back in the spotlight and not for the right reasons really. People just think she killed her best friend and so she gets no peace wherever she goes basically. And now she's just having to deal with like it coming up again and everyone being super interested in it and suspecting her and kind of hating her because of it. She travels back home to Texas for a family event and is being forced kind of to deal with all of it because she's back in the town where it happened. We get to read like excerpts of the podcast clips and I love when authors do that and just like include things like that in books. I think it makes it really fun. It reminds me a lot of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, but just dealing with adults and older people. It's a small town, a murder happened, someone makes a podcast about it and it's like a civilian investigator doing the podcast and he's going around and interviewing people in the hometown so we're getting all these different accounts of the night accounts of lucy and the girl that was killed and with each one you get a little more suspicious of every single person involved because you're like who did this if you also like only murders in the building you would really like this because it's very much that in a book where it's like civilian podcasters doing a true crime thing that are investigating. I love books like this. It's so fast paced. I am eating up the writing. It's so, so easy to binge. I really like Lucy's character. She's really funny in like a dark humor kind of way. And there's so much comedy mixed into this book, which makes it just like, there's so many times where I'm reading it and I just like giggle to myself. Cause I'm like, that was funny, even though it shouldn't be. The writing in it is just so clever, I think, and they make Lucy a very clever character. You can tell she has a lot of dimension to her, and though a lot of people suspect her for it, on the surface, there's like obviously gonna be so much more to the story that I'm really intrigued to know about, and yeah, so I'm still fairly at the beginning, but I want to binge this today, like completely finish it, so I wanted to give you guys an update. It's so easy to eat up, and so good for spooky season, fall season. It's like a mystery that's not too scary or dark. It's just really fun, which is why I think it reminds me of Holly Jackson's writing. have less than 100 pages left. I think final thoughts before I finish it are I love the writing. I love this type of murder mystery where it's like a whodunit. The girl is long dead and as more gets revealed it's one of those things where suddenly everyone in the town was involved in this in some way and has some tie to it because it's such a small town and you learn that as the podcast interviews are released and it reveals more and more and it's done really well in a way I think where you're switching your theory on who did it like every 30 pages because I swear I've gone through every character at this point thinking they are the killer and so I really just hope the reveal is as good as the tension is building up to be. The transcripts and the podcast are done super well to keep it really entertaining and I'm just excited to find out who did it because at this point I feel like I've gone through every theory in my mind and I'm just like I don't know. Let's finish this book. to go inside that's enough of this so i finished listen for the lie by amy tinteri yesterday i have to give final thoughts because i really really loved this book literally from the first page it caught my attention like i love when books have good first pages because it just makes it more exciting it kind of sucks sometimes when it's hard to like get into a book or when it's a slow beginning because that's literally what's supposed to hook you and i feel like the author did such a good job 
of automatically hooking you from the first page. It's so witty and funny and you already get what the tone of the book is gonna be and I think it's really engaging. So I would rate this probably 4.75, which I could just give it a five stars. The only reason it didn't hit five for me was because I guess the big reveal of who did it. I don't even think she makes it that obvious. I was just, if you know what to look at, which are really subtle things, then maybe you'll guess it too. Plus, I think maybe she could have done a few more things towards the end that made it a bit more surprising, but I wasn't mad at the reveal or the plot twist. Like, I thought they were well written. And even though I guessed who it was, I didn't know how or why that happened. And I don't say that to like brag or be pick me. Like, I literally never guess the reveals in any book. I'm really bad at it, actually. Because I'm just not thinking about that when I'm reading it. But with this one, it makes you think like that. Because the entire time, you're just like, who did this? It flew by. I read this in two days, which I don't usually do with books. Like, at the least, it's going to take me three days. But this one was so bingeable. It was one that I literally stayed up until 11.30 reading. Which is, like, way past my reading time. Because I'm usually way too tired by that point. But I needed to know what happened. I just think she did so well with the tone of the main character she's a really like witty strong woman and because of that she gets a lot of crap for it and that's why a lot of people suspected her for the murder simply because of her personality and the events and of the night i think i already gave you guys a lot of my thoughts on like why the details of the book like the podcast and stuff make it really fun but i really would recommend this for this fall time if you're looking for a good murder mystery if you want a good whodunit that's funny it's not too dark it's just entertaining i think you should pick up this book i highly recommend it also if you liked the a good girl's guide to murder series i think you would love this book it's like an adult version of that in my opinion there's so many similarities between the two it's actually really really fun the last book that is going to go in this reading vlog which i have already started and i'm 60 pages into is the cinnamon bun bookstore <laughs> Because guys, obviously it's fall time and I had seen these around Barnes. This is by Lori Gilmore and she has another one called The Pumpkin Spice Cafe. And look at how fall this book looks. And I remember when I saw the first one, I just thought it was super cute. I picked it up and then I just put it back down because I was like, I don't, I don't know. Sometimes with these festive books, like you never really know. But then I started to hear people talk about it. I was seeing it on Goodreads and I was like, oh, this is something people enjoy. I went back a few days ago and was like, I have to pick it up and I really want to. This is actually book two in the Dream Harbor series. The first one is the Pumpkin Spice Cafe, but I picked up this one because I couldn't find the other one and it had higher ratings and I just ran into it first. But I'll probably still read the other one during the fall time, so... Um, yeah, I think this is very much giving Stars Hollow from Gilmore Girls. I haven't watched Gilmore Girls, but that is what I've heard people say about it. It's in a super cozy small town, just giving all the adorable fall vibes. She also does give an ode to Gilmore Girls at the beginning. It says her Dream Harbor series is filled with quirky townsfolk, cozy settings, and swoon-worthy romance. She loves finding books with the perfect balance of sweetness and spice and strives for that in her own writing. If you ever wished you lived in Stars Hollow or that Luke and Lori Lay would just get together already, then her books are definitely for you. Which I think is super cute. Like, I've never had books that are inspired by one of my favorite shows, and I really do want to watch Gilmore Girls. Not to mention, this is probably my favorite cover on a romance book that I've literally ever had. I am fully just reading this for the coziness of the setting, for the cutesiness of the town and the characters, and it's really doing everything I would expect this book to do. It's a little bit cheesy, but I'm in the mood for that. And I just want a super simple, lighthearted, cheesy romance. We're following our main character, her name is Hazel and she works at the Cinnamon Bun Bookstore, which is so freaking adorable. And she starts to have basically a fling with this outgoing fisherman in town. His name is Noah. She was basically having a crisis because she's about to turn 30 and she feels like she hasn't lived up her 20s. So Noah is known as like a fun adventurous guy in town and they seem to run into each other a lot and he vows to help her enjoy her last year of her 20s before she turns 30 because she just 
wants to live it up as much as she can. I feel like I used to hate on festive books and now I just have like a completely different view of them because I thought they were like bad writing, but I don't think it's bad writing. I think it's a different style because it's meant to give you a different feeling. Like you're not reading it for the reasons you would pick up like a Kristen Hanna book, you know, which I like. It's a great palette cleanser. I'll probably give a few updates in between. Not sure there's gonna be many, but right now Noah and Hazel are just getting to know each other. They're going on a few little adventures together to get her out of her shell. on the cinnamon bun cafe because i have been reading this for the past 24 hours and i am currently 200 pages in exactly which means i have like 120 pages left and i plan to finish this today i'm literally just gonna go inside and read this isn't a book that has like major plot updates but i can tell you that the romance is good i really like it i feel like with this book i went in with like such low expectations i basically went in with no expectations because i don't know i think i was just you know what i was doing i was judging a book by its cover and when i looked at it i was like this just looks like the type of book that that i feel like i wouldn't normally enjoy or is gonna be really corny and i'm not gonna like it it's just been such a pleasant surprise i'm actually like really enjoying it like i really like this book i would recommend it i feel like there's a lot of chemistry between our two characters and it wasn't insta lovey which i like they had kind of been like into each other for months leading up to this and then finally started going on some dates together and we're at the part of the story where hazel and noah are still on like their scavenger hunt throughout the town and the way that started is basically there were some clues there's some clues that they're following and it's supposed to help hazel like get out of her comfort zone and they're just doing these like cute little mini dates together so we follow them on like a bunch of little mini dates which i love so much the only complaint i really have is that this book takes place in summer and i feel like that's misleading i feel like the cover's misleading it's giving fully fall all over the cover it was in the fall reads at barnes section it's very summery it's in a little harbor town and it's all about experiencing life and things before summer ends which i was not expecting because i really thought this was a fall read but it's really not that much of a complaint because the town itself is so cozy that it still feels like a very cozy read and i would still recommend it for the fall time however i really like our characters i love their dynamic it's like shy girl and outgoing guy on the outside they're not each other's type but they just have a soft spot for each other and we get to see that and they're exploring it and it's very much them dealing with the fact that they feel like they shouldn't be feeling this way for the other person because it's not safe and it's just gonna end in disaster but and it's just really sweet and the, again it's very simple plot lines it's really cute there's like town hall meetings everything in the town sounds very cute it's like a bakery next to a bookstore next to a cafe i'm just imagining like the sweetest little hallmark town but that's my thoughts so far and i'll be back with final review Okay, it's time we finish this video. I'm gonna give you my final thoughts on the Cinnamon Bun Bookstore because I just finished this and I wrote down a few things. I have my PSL here, so things are very cozy. So I honestly really like this book. I feel like something I realized while reading this and while going into this completely blind was to have no expectations for books and even like low expectations because usually I feel let down for a book when I've heard a lot about it or I've heard other people read it and then I read it and I don't like it or it doesn't live up to what I thought it's going to be in my head 
and a lot of the times that can make me not enjoy the reading experience as much but when it comes to this one you guys know i just had no expectations going into it and i had such a great time reading it i really liked it honestly i think it was a huge surprise for me because i was kind of doing it it's like a little random festive read but i thought the romance in it was really cute it was cheesy but it was endearing in a way and i think it's kind of exactly what you think it would be when you pick up a book like this which is just like feel good lighthearted. there's also a really fun friend group in here because the town is so small and i think the books in these series actually like go around the friend group so each book is about a different friend and a different romance it was just a very laid-back plot good vibes which sometimes a laid-back plot makes it boring but in this one it was just like the perfect fit in my opinion the characters didn't have a lot of backstory so if you like that when reading then this definitely isn't that it's just more focused on the romance and the experience that these two are having while they're doing like this treasure hunt around town something i didn't love though was i feel like the ending was really dragged out like this could have been like 40 to 50 pages shorter i definitely don't think it needed to be over 300 pages and we got a whole epilogue for i'm not sure what reason we even got a little time jump at the end which i feel like was kind of out of place like it just didn't make much sense we it just wasn't necessary to the story and by that point i was just skimming because i was like okay we get it we get what happened between the two and it's just so you can live with the characters for a little bit longer which is fun but i just didn't think it was super necessary it also had a cozy mystery element to it so if you like that i thought that was really fun it made the plot make sense and give structure to the book so i really like that part of it because you're kind of trying to figure out who is leaving her these clues in the bookstore the entire time i guess i would give this like a 3.5 out of 5 stars it definitely surpassed my expectation it's like something i would recommend to people for cozy season the fall time you could even read this in summer because it takes place in august apparently this is also a new release which is why i guess i hadn't heard as many people talk about this one compared to the pumpkin spice cafe because this is the next in the series and it came out in september so this is like her new fall release which is pretty cool so i think i'm gonna go read the first one probably add that to my fall tbr but on the topic of fall tbr I thought before this video was over, I would give you a very quick rapid fire like showcase of my fall TBR because I do have it physically in front of me. Renee actually went and really kindly and thoughtfully bought me a whole pack of books because he asked me what I wanted to read for the fall time and what was like on my radar and then he made a list and went and got them and surprised me. So I have like all of them in front of me and I thought I would show them to you because this is literally, I'm just gonna keep this stack on like a certain part of my bookshelf and be grabbing from it. Don't know much of the synopsis, so this is not gonna be summaries. I'm simply gonna show them to you. Starting with The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer. I've heard this is a really wholesome book. I'm excited to read it. We have Butcher and Blackbird. I actually started reading this um, before I picked this up because I thought I was gonna read this. I got like 20 pages in. It's a uh, unique trope you could say i think it's about two uh people who kill serial killers and fall in love with each other but and then we have when the moon hatched i actually bought this one a few weeks ago by sarah a parker huge fantasy book i've heard the audiobook is really really good so i'll probably listen to most of this on audio but i'm excited to get into it but i have heard the world of it is confusing so i'm a little intimidated we have the ballad of never after i also already had this one by, by stephanie garber second book in the once upon a broken heart trilogy which i read in this video so you know what that is so excited for this one it's heartless hunter by kristen siccarelli everyone is reading this right now and i've heard it's a really cool regency fantasy book so i'm excited it's also called the crimson moth in other countries then we have an ember in the ashes by sarah tahir I've heard really good things about this one too. It's a fantasy book, no idea what it's about. Then we have Sweet Nightmare by Tracy Wolf. If we were villains, and I think this is dark academia, which is like my favorite genre besides fantasy to read in fall. We have Good Bad Girl by Alice Feeney, and then The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I've been wanting to read this for years at this point. Whoa, the words are really small but I know this is like a classic dark academia book. And in this stack, there is mystery, there's lots of fantasy, and there's definitely dark academia. And then I'll probably just throw in like random fall romances in there. Like I think I'm gonna go pick up the pumpkin spice cafe, um, but it's definitely not a time where I crave romance as much. That is it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this cozy reading vlog. It's the first to kick off the season. I think this next one, that I'm gonna start within the next week. It's gonna be like a challenge one where you guys 
blindly pick my reads from my fall tbr so definitely make sure to follow me on instagram if you want to be involved in the choosing and the polls i'll have that link down below and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and i will see you all very very soon in my next one bye